Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. I'm laying out my Drunkard's Path quilt blocks today. So if you want to see how to put together some blocks like this for some cool designs, please stay tuned. I really enjoyed um, working with these Drunkard's Path blocks so far. Um, just as a quick uh, overview, I used um, two fabrics, um, one that I got in Jamaica on a, a trip a couple years ago, uh, this outer blue, and then I had several um, swatches or pieces of denim that I cut into squares to um, create these blocks. I used this Fiskars circle cutter to cut the individual pieces, and then I, um, I stitched them together and I ended up with about 80 blocks. I had three yards of this fabric from Jamaica and I guess it, it gave me 40 blocks. And so I cut the same number of denim squares and put them together. And so I have a total of 80 blocks. Um, I took time to lay out all of the blocks in some different configurations to decide exactly how I want to stitch them together. And what was cool about it is the design that I thought I might use, that I was really excited about, I am not going to use. So I chose something different and uh, we'll go through each one of these uh, layouts um, one at a time. And then at the end of the video, you'll see the one that I actually am gonna go with. Before I stitch these blocks together, I have to square them up. And so I'll be taking the time to do that soon and start putting this quilt together. So let's take a look at all the different layouts. This first layout I call the solid circles and that's where I made a circle of both the denim and the um, printed fabric and I alternated them um, to create this pattern. I like it, it's very simple, um, but it's a, a good way to put the blocks together. Um, I just, I, d I do like it, but I didn't pick it ultimately. The next pattern, I call it mixed circles because I mixed two of the denim fabrics with two of the uh, printed fabrics to create the circles. Um, it's basically the same design. It's just that instead of using just one thing in the circles, I used, uh, I alternated the fabrics in the individual circles. The next design, I'm calling it Fills and Furrows, is kind of like a play on the uh, the log cabin pattern where we have all of the printed fabric touching in that diagonal and then all of the denim touching in the diagonal. One thing that's important to note that I do have lights and darks, so if I chose this design, I would um, switch around those light denims and dark denims so that the light goes throughout the quilt instead of just in that one area. This next part, um, I'm actually calling it bigs and littles because I have the little part of the fabric in that diagonal followed by the big part, followed by the little part and so on. Um, and I like this one, I feel like it has a lot of movement. Um, I think that it's cool that it's a, a light, um, a light printed, I mean a little printed fabric and then big for both of them and then a little denim fabric. This next one I really liked, um, it's the waves pattern. And what I did was I just have the, you can see that it alternates between um, top and bottom or high and low for each one of the waves. The first wave is in the printed, the next wave is in the denim and so on. I feel like this one has a lot of movement. It's a lot of fun and it really reminds me of that trip. The next one is the one that I wanted to use for this pattern and it's called the Solomon's Puzzle. I actually had to really look hard at a picture of the block online um, to see exactly what it looked like and how to put it together. It's actually 16 of these blocks put together to create one of the puzzles. Um, I, I do like it, but I felt like it would be really hard to put together. 
So I redid it, but this time I focused on the block that's right in the middle and I marked it with my um, Nintendo Wii controllers here in the middle. So this is the actual block. That's the focus. But then I had to think about how to, to do the rest of the block because they're not full blocks. So that part was a, a challenge as well. And so again, I'm concerned about how to put it together without messing it up. So the next one, I call in this like radiation one, it radiates from the center. And this one uh, starts with a center circle of the printed fabric, which is basically the light. So it's like radiating from the light and uh, the pattern just kind of pushes out. And I do like this pattern. Ultimately, um, the one that I chose, which is next, is very similar except for one small difference. And that is the radiation dark. I actually like this pattern better with the darker in the center. I know they do look similar. It's just my own personal preference. I just prefer a, a, a darker center. I feel like it gives the quilt more weight and more, you know, I guess it, it just feels more stable this way. So this is a pattern that I think I'm going to go with. I've thought about moving that center circle over so that it's kind of um, slanted, but I don't know. I hope you were able to get some um, inspiration from those designs. I hope that if you were stuck on your drunkard's path and didn't know what to do, um, that would give you like a, a starting point of all the different designs that you could choose. That list is by no means the end all be all. There's still gazillion possibilities um, of ways that you could come up with to lay out your blocks. So um, which one was your favorite? Leave it in the comments. You can comment with either the number of the um, design or whatever made up name I gave to it. Um, if you have any questions about the process, please uh, leave them in the comments below. Also, there are um, other videos about the Drunkard's Path where I show step-by-step -step how I created the blocks. So please check those out um, when you get a chance. So, thumbs up this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!